In this video guide, we're going to see how we can bake effects on textures in Blender. And in particular, we're going to talk about the uh, ambient occlusion effect or the soft shadows that are going to go where the light is um, it's not going to be able to, to reach the surfaces, like, for example, here, the inside of this mount. So the ambient occlusion effect or cavity mask is used to announce the details of a subject, of an object, of a character, and uh, for other reasons. But in general, it's going to give a better render because this is how light behaves in reality. Now, we can use a combination of direct and indirect light. We can also bake indirect light, like in this other case right here. So this has, you can see the shadows are baked directly on, on the subject. So it doesn't matter how I change it, that the shadows still going to be there. And this is used uh, like in video games sometimes and um, real-time application to save um, rendering times. And this is with the ambient occlusion. So you can see that this is only the indirect lining and uh, the soft shadows. And if I change the position here, it's going to react to the light that is in the scene. So this one here has only the ambient occlusion, or let's call it indirect uh, shadows. And this one here has direct and indirect. And this one here has none. So you can see the difference. This looks uh, flat and boring and without the details uh, to announce. And so it's, uh, like it's looking more fake. So let's get started from the beginning. I'm going to create a new general uh, scene here. And I'm going to delete the cube. and going to add the little monkey head here from the meshes. Now, if you have problems in these really simple steps, you may want to have a look to simple tutorials. Uh, or you can check the Blender video course in the channel. If you are a little bit more expert, you can move on. So I'm going to add a modifier here and I'm going to add a subdivision surface. I'm going to increase the level of subdivisions a little bit. I'm going to apply this and I'm going to right click and shade smooth. So everything looks nice and smooth. Now I have the wireframe turned on and I want to turn this off. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to turn off the wireframe so we can look at this better. And um, I will make three copies of these. So Ctrl C, Ctrl V, so that we can test the without the ambient occlusion, with the ambient occlusion, and with the direct and indirect. So I'm just going to copy three times. Now, um, before we actually get into that, there is another way we can do this in the, in, in render, but this is going to be like a real-time effect. It's not going to be accurate as the one that we're going to bake and we're going to see. So to do this, we can simply go here in Geometry, in the solid mode, which is this uh, second sphere up here in the visualization types. So if we click here, we can activate the cavity. Now, when we activate the cavity, it's going to work on every object in the scene. And I can s uh, increase the effect here of the part that are en um, like enlightened and the, the other parts that are more occluded by the light. So they're, they're going to generate these shadows. Now, here it's called cavity, but I also call this ambient occlusion, and it's, they're kind of similar in, in a way. So you can see that by adjusting that, I have a lot of more details visible. So if I turn this off, things are going to look more flat and boring. If I turn this on, they, they look more uh, realistic and uh, announced. Uh, the details uh, are announced, the cavities and the, everything else. Is looking great. It also can be used like a dirt effect. So dirt usually will go in the in the cavities and in these parts of, of your objects. So dust, dirt is gonna behave like that. So this is just a fake effect just to show you what we are uh, we're gonna aim at. We're gonna aim to create ambient occlusion. Now in general in Blender to have ambient occlusion you just need to go here and you, you need to use uh, the, the render visualization, and then you can use the cycles. Now, cycles automatically develops a global illumination, so a GI, which is composed by direct and indirect, which means that you can have a little bit of shadows, and you're going to have direct shadows, direct lights, you're going to have also ambient shadows, environment shadows, and environment light, depending on here what you're going to use. Let's for example, deactivate the scene world and use the HDRI so you can see here a little bit better. We have a little bit of ambient occlusion and cavity shadows thanks just to the, to the render engine, to cycles. 
But what if we want to bake this and we want to use this in a real-time render or in other situation when I just create a texture, then we can bake the effect. So let me just, uh, well, we're going to stay in cycles and I'm going to change the visualization from layout here to the, I'm going to go to the shading interface so we can see a little bit the materials. So these um, um, objects here don't have a material yet. So I'm going to leave this one as it is. And in the second one, we're going to play with the ambient occlusion a little bit more. So I'm going to create a new material here. And uh, I'm going to leave white uh, as, as material, as the base material uh, color. And now we're going to switch again to the render engine. We're going to switch again to the cycles. And I'm also want to turn on the, the HRI. But uh, the, the scene world is the important one. So let's actually work with the scene world. So I'm going to go here and increase the color of the scene world so we can see a little bit better. And you can see that everything looks really flat because we are using a color here to, to illuminate the scene. We also have a light, actually. So let's bring this light a little bit forward with the move tool here. Just to, I'm, I'm going to place it right here. OK, so we can see a little bit better. There you go. And so you can see that without an ambient occlusion effect, things are kind of disappearing in the background. So let's take this one here. And to bake uh, a texture, we need an uh, empty texture. So we're going to go to Add Texture and go to the Image Texture and create a new one and just call this AO slash Cavity Bake. And you can also change the resolution. Let's increase it. You, you increase it by multiplying that to multiples of two. So it's going to be two, uh, 1024 times two is going to be 2048. And uh, that's it. So let's say, OK, so this is an empty one. You can see here the preview of the texture. It's empty. So let's bake this. So let's go in the uh, render properties here. And let's search for bake here. So there it is. And we're going to select the ambient occlusion bake. And let's press bake. And that's it. So all we need to do now is wait for the texture to be baked. And it's going to appear right here. Now remember, you need to select the object. You need to select the texture you want to bake on. And leave everything as it is. It will be fine. But uh, make sure that you are here in the target. You have image texture. You are targeting the image texture and just wait okay so we generated here the ambient occlusion map and it's also right here one thing if you want to save this outside you can go to image and just uh, save as and you can save it here on the on, on whatever folder you you want and you can also um, modify this further in a graphic design uh, application if you want and uh, another important thing is that you need to have a mapping. Now, the, the monkey head here in, in Blender actually has an unwrap mapping. So if you're uh, planning to do a similar thing with your model, with your object, make sure it has a UV unwrap map like this. Otherwise, it won't work. OK, so now that we have it, we can just uh, click and drag it and insert it right here. So you can see that the difference between this one here and this one here is uh, pretty visible. Uh, for the cavity and ambient occlusion. And if we want to make this more uh, visible, we can go to Add and add, uh, let's say here, a color correction of like the, the brightness and contrast or others. So here I can, for example, increase the contrast and perhaps decrease the brightness a little bit. So you can see that it, it looks more visible. So you can, well, this is just an example. You have many other tools that you can use to announce the effect even more. Now let's go here and um, now we we already said that we are illuminating the scene with an environment light and also with a direct light like this. So what if we want to bake also the, the direct lighting and not only that uh, ambient occlusion effect. So let's go in the third um, monkey here and let's do it. So I'm going to create a new material again and uh, I'm going to create a new texture again. So I'm going to add texture and uh, image texture, create a new one. Let's leave it like this and let's do, let's call this GI bake. So we, GI is global illumination. 
and um, by definition is the combination of direct and indirect lining and shadows and uh, so um, perhaps we want to make this a uh, little bit more uh, evident so we probably want to use more darkness but it's gonna be fine right now I'm just gonna decrease a little bit the the lining the overall lining so we can see also better and so I'm gonna decrease the the brightness of the the background color okay now uh, let's go back to bake so we need to go to render properties again go again to bake and this time we want to use combined and here there is are all the other effects that you can check on and off so if you want direct indirect if you want diffuse glossy transmission and so on so uh, let's go and bake again and let's wait again for this new texture to be baked. Okay, now we can see that we have baked also the, the shadows here and the direct line of the Omnilight. So we can now place this into the, the base color again. And it's gonna be a little bit darker because um, the, the scene is not totally bright. So everything that is in the scene, again, uh, in terms of direct and indirect, is gonna be baked. So this is the, the, the result. And again, if we want, we can add a, a node here to, to work a little bit with the color correction and adjust it a little bit, perhaps. So you want to like add a, a little bit of contrast and brightness uh, or, you know, do whatever you want. Now, you can use this um, baked texture for other effects, like if you want to use it for metallic, the part that is going to be more uh, white, uh, the, the, the brighter part is going to be more metallic, the darker part is going to be less metallic, or you can do this with the specular, or you can do it with the roughness, and so on. So you can use it for also uh, the other maps. So this will be all for this video guide. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please subscribe to the channel and uh, stay updated. If you want to thank us, if you want to support us, you can join the channel as a supporter. And so that's it. See you in the next video guide.